everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about how to find the maximum or minimum of a quadratic. That's the phrasing, you're going to see this a lot on the SAT. They love these kind of problems, maximum, minimum of quadratics or parabolas. And what they are meaning when they say that is just the vertex. And I'll show you why they mean what I mean when I say this. A parabola looks something like this. It can open up, it can open down, it can be very wide, it can be very narrow. But in all these cases, the vertex is going to be either the maximum or the minimum. And it's whether it opens up or down that determines which of those it is. So if I have a parabola that is opening up, then how low it goes, this is its lowest point, that is its minimum. If I have one that is opening down, then it's how high does it go? That's the highest point, that's its maximum. So it's always going to be the vertex. And when you find that vertex, which is going to be an X and Y coordinate, then you can answer whatever question they're asking you. They may ask you for the X value, they may ask you for the Y value, they may ask you for the coordinates, but you'll have it. You'll have it there because you have the vertex and that is the maximum or minimum point, again, depending if it opens up or down. Now there's two ways that you're gonna be presented this problem. You're either gonna be given a picture, a graph of a parabola, or you're going to be given an equation. I'm going to show you both ways so whichever way you get you can do it first if you have a a graph that you are given you're just going to look for the vertex and huh, don't know why it doesn't like me drawing dots it really doesn't like me drawing dots so i was like do you want to make a note no microsoft i don't people like to draw dots sometimes and i drew that dot there at the vertex and this vertex on your graph, on the problem, your hypothetical problem that you're doing, it may be labeled or you may need to just look at the lines and determine where that vertex is. In this case, I didn't draw it perfectly on the line because drawing parabolas are not my specialty, but it looks like it's about 3.1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it looks like my Y value is 5 more of like a actual point if it doesn't have a hissy about me drawing another dot there we go 3.1 and 5 that looks to be my maximum value for this so if you have an sat question you're given a graph and they say what is the x value at the maximum of this quadratic it's going to be 3.1 if they ask for the y it's going to be 5 if they want the coordinates it's 3.1 and 5. so that's the more sort of straightforward one when you are given the um, the equation, and this can be any any quadratic equation, like let's say y equals let's say x squared plus five x plus seven, picking random numbers here. Now you may or may not be allowed to graph this on a calculator. A lot of students, once they learn that they can just graph it and kind of zoom zoom in and see where that vertex is, they're like, shoot, I can just you know type this in the graphing calculator, find the vertex, boom, I'm done. It's not always an option. Sometimes when I have a test or worksheet, they want you to do this mathematically, not graphically. Here's how you do that. You need to find the vertex and the vertex is going to follow. Some teachers may tell you differently. This is my method. Honestly, it's the fastest. Find the axis of symmetry first. That's what you want. So the axis of symmetry is the line that would go straight down the middle of a parabola and make it uh, two symmetrical halves, divide it perfectly in half, and it always goes through the vertex. So if you can find that axis of symmetry, which is always a vertical line, which is x equals a number, you've got your x value for that vertex. You've done half the battle. And there is a very simple formula to find that axis of symmetry. It is x equals negative b over 2a. The b and the a in this case are referring to sort of our standard form of a quadratic, which looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. You may remember this from doing like the quadratic formula. You may have already done that at this point in your math journey where you have to factor and solve. Remember that whole 
negative b plus or minus square root of b squared. You know, it gets so big. Remember that thing? Yeah, same a, b, and c, same thing. So that a is going to correspond to the number in front of x. In this case, it is an invisible number one. The b corresponds to the number, excuse me, by the x squared, I should have said. The number by the x in the middle, in this case, it's five. And c corresponds to this last number that's by itself, in this case, seven. So negative or the opposite of b, be careful there. If it says negative b and this were already a negative, it's the opposite of that. You get what I'm saying? Be careful on that one. So the opposite of our positive 5 would be a negative 5. And then 2 times our a, our a again is this invisible number 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So there we have x equals negative 5 halves. That is my axis of symmetry. So if I have this little line and I were to draw my little, I'm sorry, my little graph, and I would draw a line here and say, oh, that's x equals negative 5 halves then this parabola is somewhere on this line. Okay, so once I have this axis of symmetry, this negative b over 2a, negative 5 halves, then I have to do a little math. Let's clean this up. Let's get these out of the way so they're not muddying the waters. That is my x value for my vertex. I need to plug it in wherever there is an x in this original one, do all this math, and then I will get my y value. This is where most people are wanting their calculators, and I don't blame them because fractions. Gotta love fractions, right? Negative 5 halves squared plus 5 times negative 5 halves plus 7. But this is my own fault, right? Because I'm the one that made up this problem, and I picked something that would turn out as a fraction. So I have, I've made my bed, and now i got to lie in it. Negative 5 halves squared is 25 fourths. 5 times negative 5 halves is negative 25 halves. And then I just have that plus 7. So 25 fourths minus, I'm going to change that so I can combine them. 50 fourths, multiply it by 2 over 2, plus 7. 25 fourths minus 50 fourths is negative 25 fourths plus seven, <laughs> I write plus six, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm doing the math in my head. Negative 25 fourths is negative six and one fourth plus seven equals three fourths. And there is my y value. So the coordinates of that vertex, my x again was negative five halves and my y value was three fourths. Granted, most of the time when they give you these, you know, the ones you start out with are not going to be fractions, but they're going to throw fractions in there. You know they are. You know, deep down, they're just like cackling evilly in their little math book writing layer going, <laughs> they have to do fractions again. You know it's the truth, right? Yeah. So that's how we find our uh, vertex, and that's going to be your maximum or your minimum always. This method will always find that for you. And it's the same whether it's a maximum or a minimum. So again, our steps that we're going to use if we're doing this mathematically, we are going to find the axis of symmetry by using x equals negative b over 2a, where b is the coefficient of the middle term and a is the coefficient of the first term, the x squared. Once I have that x number, that x value, I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in wherever there is an x in that original equation. And then I'm going to do all that math and I'm going to get my answer and then I will know my vertex. And that's it. That's how you find the maximum or minimum of a parabola or quadratic, which again, you know, if you've got a calculator, you got a very accurate graph that's just going to tell you and you can just type it in, zoom in. That is also a valid way of solving this problem. If this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.